Okay, we're back, and I'm going to talk to you about getting what you want in this third and final video. And uh, so you might be saying, well, aside from being a big mouth and picking yourself on YouTube, Will, what the heck have you done? Um, well, I started Folio Academy with my friend Wayne and Drayson, uh, where we sell uh, video tutorials to artists. Um, uh, I made three ebooks which have sold over 50,000 copies on Barnes & Noble and Amazon. A story app called I Eat You uh, for iPad and iPhone. And uh, with Jake Parker just recently started the School of Visual Storytelling where we teach live online classes and there's a link to it on my blog at willterry.blogspot.com and now I'm working on an app, a story app called Gary's Place. It's about a gopher who uh, lives a little beyond his means and and runs into some disaster um, and that one I am really working super hard on right now that's going on right now this is fall of 2013 uh, should be released before Christmas uh, so these are these are projects where I have picked myself and said you know what I'm gonna do this and if it fails so what I don't care um, okay so some things that you gotta keep in mind are one wealth is created in your spare time okay so I'm gonna read this next part because I don't wanna mess it up because I because I actually wrote it for you guys so I'm gonna read this one so I want you to question what you think you need okay if you could look into the future and see yourself after you created an amazing project that is having great commercial success and aside from the nice money that's coming in the fact that your peers are excited about what you've created and colleagues and organizations want you to come and give talks on how you did it and basically uh, you're winning awards and having the time of your life would you okay would you give up some of your Friday and Saturday nights to work on your art okay if you knew that was the reality uh, if, if you could have this amazing if you look into the future and have this amazing thing happen would you give up your Friday and Saturday nights to work on your art? Would you live in a smaller apartment or a house so you can work less hours to be able to work on your art? Would you go for a cheaper cell phone and maybe it's a cheaper cell phone plan to be able to save money for your art? Would you spend less time watching TV and movies to work on your art? And I mean a lot less time. Would you play fewer or no video games for your art? Okay. And if you're not willing to give up those things, then I want you to say, I would rather hang out with friends, spend money that I don't need to spend, watch TV and play video games than have my dreams come true of becoming a fill-in-the-blank. Okay? Um, I see a lot of my students playing video games. I see a lot of my students wasting time, I think. Um, and uh, I, let me, I'll come clean. I used to be addicted to StarCraft. Uh, and I lost about three or four years of my life on that stupid game. Uh, games are fun, and I've come to the realization that if the game is amazing like StarCraft, I can't play it because I get addicted. Um, and, and really, you have to come to terms with the fact of, well, what do you want your legacy to be? I mean, life is short. Um, I did really good in these video games, or I created this amazing things. Um, you need to be able to fall in love with your art. Okay, not with the things that are going to distract you from it. Okay, so here are some strategies for you. These are some things that I think might work a little bit. Um, as Neil Gaiman said, make great art. And he is absolutely right. There is no substitute to making great art as the first step. That's not the only step. That's the first step. Make great art. And if, if you're starting out right now, you might not be making great art but guess what nobody made great art front right from the beginning and the whole idea of child prodigies it's pretty much a myth it's pretty much been debunked uh, and proven that pe even artists like Mozart who they've made movies about and said that he had you know this amazing gift uh, he was a virtually unknown for the first 10 years of his uh, musical career um, it takes a lot of hard work a lot of practice a lot of not surfing on the internet, a lot of not playing games, and a lot of just sitting down and drawing and painting and drawing and painting and improving your craft. Okay? So that's the first thing. Uh, that My next piece of advice is create every day, even if it's a small little tiny thing for 15 minutes, 
every single day you create something okay get in the habit carry your sketchbook with you everywhere never leave home never leave anywhere carry it like it's attached to your body carry a sketchbook with you um, if you're gonna sketch on your phone or you're on your uh, iPad then carry make sure you have that um, the next one is consume great art okay you can't make it if you don't know what it is uh, when I was I remember being a student and thinking well if I'm looking at other people's art then I'm gonna copy and that's not good no you should copy in fact if you go to the New York Academy of Art and a lot of art schools uh, they make you copy because copying will actually make you get better um, art is a lot like sports because there's a lot of creativity in sports uh, there's there's not you know there's there's not um, a set way to make a layup and everybody has their own style so so sports are sports is a lot like um, uh, is art okay so sports are a lot of aspects of sports is art and if you and if you think about that if you've ever played basketball on a team they make you run drills they make you do things that other players have come up with they make you run their plays um, and so you're copying the moves that the greats made before you came along why is there anything different about copying other people's art so we copy when we go to school we copy, copy master copies of art I used to think I could do it on my own I didn't want to look at other people's art because I wanted to be completely original I was 180 degrees from the way that originality works originality can only work when you look at other things and you add something or some other idea of your own to it okay so you've got to consume great art in order to make great art and you have to borrow uh, what you consume okay the next one is create quality learn from your mistakes create better quality learn create better quality never settle and keep trying to improve you will have pinnacle pieces well, let me go the other way let's see everything's backwards on my screen I can't do it uh, you'll, you'll make a piece here we go and and it'll be better than everything you made before and then you might go download it but then you'll do something else that's better than that last really good one and then your artwork might not be at that same level and then you'll do one up here and you'll amaze yourself and like how did I do that and that's how improvement will work if you were to graft it um, you should always try to outdo what you've done in the past you should always never settle for the level that you are currently at um, and only until you're able to hate what you used to do or be sick and tired of what you used to be able to accomplish will you be able to improve so if you're not dissatisfied with your current level you will not be able to improve you can never be be happy and so I mean enjoy what you're making enjoy what you're doing but don't let it set there okay the next one is set goals uh, this this is this this one's more for the actual project if you choose to do uh, a graphic novel if you choose to do a web comic if you choose to do um, let's say you you want to um, use a program like Quickshare which is a which is a uh, program that helps you make your own app okay without having to learn how to code and um, so let's say you want to make your own um, story comic or story app comic okay um, and, and upload it to, to Apple or upload it to um, Barnes & Noble or Amazon um, don't look at I'm trying to figure out where I was supposed to go with that um, if you're gonna make a project like that it is a daunting task okay it, it can be overwhelming I'm working on a story app right now and even at, at the stage I mean I've been an illustrator for 20 years and there are times where I have to use my own advice here which is uh, to, to not look at the whole project because it's overwhelming and to say today all I need to do is get this one little thing done and I've checked that off the list and I'm that much closer to the end um, you can accomplish amazing things if you're willing to look at it in little stages and never quit and never stop and never look back okay uh, the next one surround yourself with positive people there are gonna be plenty of people if you decide to do X if you say I'm gonna work on this or I'm gonna work on that I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that uh, that will go negative on you 
and they'll say you can't do that you're not good enough for that that never works people don't make money doing that blah 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 this that or the other they are projecting their own fears on you and they often there are a lot of people and it, it, it's hard to understand they don't want you to succeed because then that will make them feel bad that they're not succeeding so they're going to project on you and tell you that you're not going to succeed uh, you can't hang around with people like that it's it's hard enough to to uh, handle your own negative voices which we're going to talk about in a little bit um, but you don't need negative people around you so surround yourself with positive people um, when your talent level gets high enough and it doesn't have to be super high but when you start doing decent things try to partner with talented people um, because talent begets talent energy begets energy and integrity begets integrity. So, people, you, you might not be able to satisfy all the um, all the disciplines that it's going to take to pull off the project that you want to finish. In other words, you might not be able to program, or you may not be able to do the color, or you may not be able to do the drawing, or you may not be able to do the writing. You can probably do a bunch of them, but you probably can't do them all, and you may need some help. Um, right now I'm partnering with Rick Walton on my story app he wrote an amazing story which I'm illustrating and programming uh, using quick and uh, uh, he wouldn't have partnered with me if I didn't bring something to the table and I wouldn't have partnered with him if he didn't so the higher that's why it goes back to make great art uh, what Neil Gaiman said if you make great art other people are gonna wanna partner with you other people are gonna wanna be around you other people are going to want to have what you have, uh, and those are the teams that are going to win in the future. Those are the teams that you're going to see amazing products coming out of, or the people that work hard, uh, and the people that are partnering up with people that work hard. Okay. Um, okay. So now, one thing that I forgot to put on my notes, I want to make sure I hit this because it's very important. Some people might be thinking, and a lot of you guys are probably thinking this. How do I afford to do all this? Okay, how in the world can I can I uh, just jump into a project that doesn't have any guarantee of paying me money? Um, that isn't gonna, that, you know, that probably won't make money on the first one, um, or the second one, or the third one. Uh, my answer to you is that you have to somehow figure out how to afford to live and do this in your spare time. Okay, um, again with publishing with there being fewer there are really are fewer um, books being produced now than there were five or ten years ago um, and so with fewer with fewer um, illustrators being hired and with more illustrators coming out um, there, it's gonna be harder to get those jobs so it might be hard for you I have a lot of students that ask me how do I get my start how do I get those first jobs so I can come again? you're gonna if you're an artist you're an artist. You, you have to admit that you're an artist. So be an artist in your spare time, okay? Uh, I, have, I have one of my students who's working at Home Depot. Um, he, amazing guy, super positive, super talented, and he, and he wanted to get a job in an art-related field like, like uh, graphic design. Will, should I get a, a job? Should I quit my job at Home Depot uh, and get an art or a graphic design job. I'm like, well, graphic design isn't going to get you any closer to illustration because you're going to be doing graphic design, and that's it. End of story. Um, it sounds like it's a foot in the door. It's not. All it's going to do is sap your creative energy, and then when you come home, you're not going to want to work on your art because you gave your creativity away to an employer. Um, nothing wrong with being a graphic designer if that's what you really love doing. But if you want to be an illustrator, don't go be a graphic designer. Stay. At, I asked him. I asked this guy, "You like working at Home Depot?" Uh, he said, "Yeah, I love it there. My job's great." Um, and so I said, I, "If I were you, I would stay there." I said, "Do, do you, when you come home at night, are you excited to work uh, on your art?" He's like, "Yeah, I can't wait." I'm like, "Be a graphic designer, and you won't say that." So he stayed there he just got a huge promotion now he's making really big money because now he's an assistant manager of a store um, he's happy he has time to work on his art he doesn't have to worry about money um, so I think that that's probably the better way to go is to look at look you know some people have hobbies they can't wait for the weekend so they can work on 
their hobby, whatever that is. Maybe it's softball or maybe it's uh, fly fishing or who knows what. If you're an artist, make that your hobby. Make it the most important thing that you do when you're not at work. Um, and then make interesting, amazing projects one after another. And you'll be surprised at what you can accomplish. And you might even be surprised at how people respond to it because it's going to have your passion. It's going to have your heart and your soul into it because you're going to be doing what you want. You're not going to be doing the crappy project that some, uh, some employer wants you to do that may or may not fit with your vision. Um, and, and so that's, that's kind of my message is about having, being able to afford how to do it. Okay. So, uh, one of the, one of the, I'm, I'm wrapping this up right now, but I wanted to also get this in there. You're going to run into a lot of people who are stuck in the old ways of, of the way things are. There's a lot of people in that have been picked that don't want you to succeed, that don't want you to go the backdoor route of doing this. A lot of people in publishing will say, that's not the right way to do it. That'll never work. That'll never make money. The right way is to work through us. Okay, That's one right way. Uh, publishing has is is an amazing amplifier. If you if you do the right project in publishing, you can make huge dollars. Um, I'm, I mean, you, you can you can make millions. There's illustrators that have made millions of dollars working through publishers. That's still a very viable route to go. And if you're really committed to being an illustrator, I don't think you should not try to do publishing the traditional way. Um, and working through an agent, working with a rep, working through editors and, and, and art directors, that's a viable way. There are new people being discovered all the time in publishing um, that are getting uh, the young people that are doing amazing. Zach Gretz is another one. He's going to be um, teaching on our Photoshop Power Day. His book, again, this is October 2013, his book, Too Much Glue, is got an amazingly uh, low Amazon rank in the 1000s which that's out of all books Amazon sells and he's brand new out of school last year um, I've never had a book in that kind of uh, a ranking not even close so new people can come out of school and still do really good in publishing but if you're not getting picked my, my message is if you're not getting picked why not work on your own stuff too it seems simple but a lot of people are going to tell you not to do it that way. That's the wrong way. To do it. There's no wrong way anymore. There's only right ways. There's lots of right ways. I had a woman that commented on one of my YouTube videos on um, on the uh, How to Illustrate Children's Book video that I did, which is a video series that I sell, uh, How to Illustrate Children's Books. And she said, I'm going to quote, Children's book editors much prefer that writers do not illustrate books they submit unless... He, she is highly a highly gifted illustrator like Eric Carl or Mari Sendak. Well, gee, how did Eric Carl or Mari Sendak become highly gifted? Guess what? They worked on their own projects. They worked on their own art, and they taught themselves. Yes, teachers help you become better artists, but a teacher can't make you a good uh, illustrator. That's what you do. You you do that through your own practice. So. Um, that's somebody who's stuck in the old ways. You need to not do that because you're not good at that. And you need to be, it's only for the gifted people, the highly gifted people. Um, it has nothing to do about, about being gifted. It has to do with hard work. Um, so if you really, uh, this is a, this is, and this, this is a quote right here from, um, ah, I should have wrote his name down. Um, William Joyce, uh, the guy that did Roly Poly Oli and he did uh, the, the flying books of Morris Less Moore, and uh, he just did that Chipotle commercial that's hot on YouTube in 2013. Um, the animated um, uh, Chipotle thing with this the uh, organic the the um, uh, what do you call it the GMO foods and stuff. Uh, he says if you really love to write and you really love to tell stories and you really love to draw, you just have to keep doing it no matter what anybody else says. Um, so I guess in, in finishing this up, I would, I would tell you this, that I think that if you don't follow through with your dreams, you are going to be five, 10, 20 years older, and you're going to look back and you're going to say, you're going to look at other artists who did it, who were probably not as good as you. And you're going to say, 
I could have done that. And you know what? You're right. You could have. Hey, thanks for watching.